burns outline introduction pathophysiology burn injury classification rule of nines investigations management introduction most burns are not life threatening but each burn causes a significant amount of pain for the patient and some degree of psychological trauma to all those involved from the patient's perspective even superficial burns carry a risk of scar formation at temperature greater than 120 degree fahrenheit it only takes 3 seconds to burn a child's skin severely enough to require surgery rapid evaluation by the emergency physician ep is essential to address pain management mitigate the psychological impact of the burn and identify intentional burns pathophysiology the severity of burn injury is related to the rate at which heat is transferred from the heating agent to the skin the rate of heat transfer depends on the heat capacity of the agent temperature of the agent duration of contact with the agent transfer coefficient specific heat and conductivity of the local tissues human skin can tolerate temperatures up to 40 degrees celsius that is 104 degree fahrenheit for a relatively long time before irreversible injury occurs relationship between temperatures and duration of exposure in the development of full thickness burn injury the first day after burn injury three concentric zones of tissue injury characterize a full thickness burn the zones of coagulation stasis and hyperemia the central zone of coagulation it has the most intimate contact with the heat source it consists of dead or dying cells as a result of coagulation necrosis and absent blood flow it usually appears white or charred the intermediate zone of stasis it is usually red and may blanch on pressure giving the impression that it has an intact circulation after 24 hours however the circulation through its superficial vessels has often ceased by the third day the intermediate zone of stasis becomes white because its superficial dermis is avascular and necrotic the outer zone of hyperemia it is a red zone that blanches on pressure indicating that it has intact circulation by the fourth day this zone has a deeper red color healing is present by the seventh day systemic inflammatory response in patients whose burns exceed 30% of tbsa cytokines and other mediators are released into the systemic circulation causing a systemic inflammatory response because vessels in burned tissue exhibit increased vascular permeability and extravasation of fluids into the burned tissues occurs hypovolemia is the immediate consequence of this fluid loss which accounts for decreased perfusion and oxygen delivery in patients with serious burns release of catecholamines vasopressin and angiotensin causes peripheral and splanchnic bed vasoconstriction that can compromise in organ perfusion burn injury classification first degree burns minor epithelial damage of the epidermis exists redness tenderness and pain are the hallmarks of the injury blistering does not occur two point discrimination remains intact 
healing takes place over several days without scarring. The most common causes of first degree burns are flash burns and sunburns. Second degree burns Second degree burns are superficial partial thickness and deep partial thickness burns. In these burn injuries, some portion of the skin appendages remains viable, allowing epithelial repair of the burn wound without skin grafting. The superficial partial thickness burn. It involves the epidermis and superficial papillary dermis, often resulting in thin walled fluid filled blisters. These burns appear pink, moist, and soft, and are exquisitely tender when touched by a gloved hand. They heal in approximately two to three weeks, usually without scarring. The deep partial thickness burn. It extends into the reticular dermis. The skin color is usually a mixture of red and blanched white. Blisters are thick walled and are often ruptured. Two point discrimination may be diminished, but pressure applied to the burned skin can be felt. This injury may undergo spontaneous epithelialization and may heal in three to six weeks. These burns have a greater potential for hypotrophic scar formation. Splash scales often cause second degree burns. Third degree burns. These are full thickness burns that destroy both epidermis and dermis. The capillary network of the dermis is completely destroyed. The burned skin has a white or leathery appearance with underlying clotted vessels and is anesthetic. Unless a third degree burn is small enough to heal by contraction, less than 1.0 cm in diameter, skin grafting is always necessary to resurface the injured area. Immersion scales, flame burns and chemical and high voltage electrical injuries cause third degree burns. Fourth degree burns. These burns involve full thickness destruction of the skin and subcutaneous tissue with involvement of the underlying fascia, muscle, bone or other structures. These injuries require extensive debridement and complex reconstruction of specialized tissues and invariably result in prolonged disability. Fourth degree burns result from prolonged exposure to the usual causes of third degree burns. Investigations Severe burns, that is, third degree burns, require a complete laboratory workup, including the following. CBC Chemistry profile Arterial blood gases with carboxyhemoglobin Coagulation profile Urine analysis Type and screen Creatine phosphokinase, CPK, and urine myoglobin Perform fiber optic bronchoscopy for any patient suspected of having an inhalation burn Management The patient who has airway involvement should be intubated early in the course because edema can develop and make intubation increasingly difficult. Establish intravenous access and begin fluid resuscitation. Begin two large bore peripheral lines and administer crystalloids. Fluid needs for burn victims in the acute phase can be calculated using the Parkland formula as follows. 4 cm raised to power 3 of crystalloid multiplied by percent BSA burn multiplied by body weight in kilogram. One half of the calculated fluid requirement is administered in the first 8 hours and the balance is given over the remaining 16 hours. Thus, Fluids would be given at 525 cm raised to power 3 per hour for the first 8 hours, 
then at 262.5 cm3 per hour for the remaining 16 hours. For children, an alternative formula to calculate fluid needs is the Galveston formula. Lactated ringer, LR, solution is used at 5000 cm3 per meter square multiplied by percent BSA burn plus 2000 cm3 per meter square per 24 hour of maintenance. One half of the total fluid is given in the first 8 hours with the balance given over the next 16 hours. Maintain urine output in children at 1 cm3 per kilogram per hour. Burns of areas such as the face are best treated by an open technique. Wash the burn area, debride any open blisters and cover wounds with topical antibiotics, example neosporin, bactericin.